Hi, my name is Samantha. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's video is all about your square reader. Let's see how to make it work better for you. Let's get into the video. Stay tuned till the end for a bonus tip number six. So I have my square reader set up with Etsy. I ordered it through my Etsy account, so the square reader itself did not cost me anything. This little guy right here. If I wanna to upgrade to one of the square readers that you stick the card in rather than swipe, then there is a fee for that. I wanna say it's $70. And then since you're not paying for the card reader, you're paying per transaction, and the fee is 2.6% plus 10 cents every transaction. So it's not, um, hugely significant, but it is a little bit every time. So here are the five features that I have found that you need to make sure that you're using to make your square reader work harder for you. The first uh, setting that you need to make sure you're using is adding the sales tax. I have been using Etsy for two years, so I've never had to collect sales tax. It just does it for me within the application and collects the payment. And when I started doing in-person events, I don't know, you're thinking about so many other things. I didn't even think about it for my first couple of events. So it's definitely gonna hurt me in the long run. But find out what your state tax is. So I live in Virginia and the state tax is 5.3%. So we're, how you change this in Square, I will show you on the screen here. You go to more, then settings, check out taxes. And then there's a little plus and you can add the taxes. So I also have done shows in Maryland and the Maryland tax is 6%. So I have two different options. And when you turn on the uh, sales tax, make sure that you click the button that says um, apply tax to all items. And before you have your first customer, go ahead and test it out and click on an item, hit checkout and make sure that the tax is added. Sometimes, I don't know if it's like updating inventory on Etsy that it ends up not matching up and then the sales tax doesn't get added, but make sure that before your first customer of the day that your sales tax is added. You don't need to be adding this cost. And then as far as collecting cash, so um, if the total was $5 and then with tax it's six twenty-five, dollars you can either just say it's $5 and then it will hurt you in the long run by not collecting the sales tax, or you can just say it's $6, you can round down, or you can say it's $7. I found that most people are okay with you rounding up. If you just tell them, hey, it's 625, but I don't have any change, can we just do seven? Most people are all right with it. If they're not, just round down and suck it up for the next transaction or add taxes into your pricing. So if taxes on average is uh, 5%, five or 6%, add 5% to all of your costs and that will cover the tax. The second, feature that you need to be using in Square is removing your address. Unless you have a physical business address, if it's your house or it is um, like your home, then you do not want that address showing up on people's receipts. You wanna protect your uh, information. So how you shut that off is you go under more settings, account, and then business information. Then you scroll up and there will be a little swipe box and you will swipe over and say, I have a mobile business. And this way it will not show your address when you are doing a transaction. Uh, what it will do is it'll show the GPS coordinates of where you are when you did that transaction, which they already know because they were at that event with you. On the same note, in the same section of settings, uh, my third uh, tip is to add your email website, logo, logo, and socials to that same area. This way, when a customer gets your receipts, they will have all your information and they can come back to you and buy from you again. The fourth tip I have for you is to make sure you're constantly updating your inventory. I make sure to update, so what I do is I take an inventory of all my items before I go to a craft fair and um, go into Etsy and make sure that all my totals are correct and then you sync your Etsy to the square before the event and then I also like to sync it halfway through the day just in the off chance that I don't know napkins with bunnies on them somebody buys them in person and then someone goes to order them online the same day and you only have one you need to make sure that you're constantly updating your inventory and it just takes a second to refresh it you go into the Etsy app more sell a square and then hit sync with square and just make sure that it's constantly updated my fifth and biggest tip 
is to turn on your tipping. What you do is you go under more settings, checkout, and then tipping. And what happens is when someone goes to check out, you've probably seen it before if you've been a customer at an ice cream shop or uh, any food restaurants, most of them have square readers and they flip it around to you and it says on the top like 0%, 10%, 5%, all the tip options. So turn that on. Why you should do this is it's not gonna help you with cash transactions, right? Unless that they, it's 625 and they pay seven, right? And you get a couple extra cents. What the tipping is gonna help you do is it's not necessarily gonna make you more money, but it's gonna cover your costs. So if the credit card cost is 2.6% and then 10%, 10 cents per transaction, this is an average I've seen about like 50 cents to $1.50 per transaction. So if you turn on the tipping and one out of every 10 people gives you a tip of 10%, then you've covered all your credit card fees for the day. That makes this guy free. So turn on your tipping. I have not had an event yet that at least one person doesn't tip me. So if one person tips you every event, then it will cover your credit card costs. And even if it doesn't cover your credit card costs, it will make a dent so that you are paying less in fees. So for example, I have been using my Square Reader since April. I have accrued $17.66 in fees from Square. I have made $27.85 in tips. So that means I've made $10 more than what the fees are. So this also covers my Etsy fees. So definitely turn on the tips, not to make more money, to just make it so that you don't have to include that in your costs. Like the fee is already taken care of and trust me, it works. And if someone doesn't want to tip you, they don't have to. There's an option that's a 0% tip and it's totally fine if people don't want to tip you. And if you do go a whole event with no tipping, I'm sure the next event, two people will tip you. So it's not a big deal. Just turn it on. If someone wants to use it, they can use it. If not, they don't have to. So that's why I have the tip turned on and the signature so that they're already looking at my phone to sign and then it shows the tip. And I say like there's an optional tip at the top. So if you feel guilty about that, don't, because you're not taking that money. That money is to just cover your fees, which makes you a better business owner because then you're not having to pay for things that aren't even doing anything for you. So my last bonus tip is to add favorites to your square reader. How you do this is on the main screen, you scroll over to favorites and you hold on to it and you add the items that sell the most. This makes it really quick for checkout because you can go ahead and click that someone bought a napkin, someone bought a face mask, someone bought a scrunchie, and it helps you add up your total rather than typing in and searching through your library. Um, and also making sure that your Etsy product photos are updated so that when you have your favorites, it's an image so that you can see very easily what every product is. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any tips to share with us about how to make your square reader work harder for you, please leave them down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you so much.